G4 Rewind returns tomorrow morning at 9. You have won every battle. You have beaten down every foe. You are the unstoppable hero. The rock star god. And this is your reward. Once a year, the world's top game developers come together to give us a look at the gaming beasts they are prepared to unleash. G4 is giving you an all-access backstage pass to E3 before anyone else. With an eye-scorching sneak preview of all the explosive action here at Gaming Ground Zero. These doors are closed to the public, but G4 is going to blow them wide open giving you an early taste of all the earth-shaking announcements, live first-look demos of games, and FaceTime with the geniuses who make them. It's a one-of-a-kind, brain-gorging glimpse at the future of gaming before it's revealed to the rest of the world. G4's exclusive preview of the billion-dollar multi-console gaming monster that is E3 starts now. Olivia Mon and Kevin Pereira. Together, we'll be bringing you all the excitement of E3 live. Yes, all of the biggest names in gaming are at E3, showing off all of their new and upcoming projects. And G4 is the only place for exclusive inside information and every major announcement. That's right. Now, this show doesn't officially start until tomorrow, but that doesn't matter because we've got all the good stuff today. And we're not going to waste your time with some trailers and some gossip. Nope. No, no, no. We've got the games that you want right now. Today, we are opening the floodgates with behind-the-scenes action, interviews with the biggest names in gaming, and live demos of every single major title. Coming up this hour, we'll go hands-on with Fable 2, Peter Molyneux's ambitious action RPG that lets you decide if you're the hero or the villain. Plus, Silent Hill is back. We've got an exclusive demo of the game's latest chapter, Homecoming. And make sure you don't get slimed. You guys are going to be among the first to see Ghostbusters, the video game, which features all of the film's original cast. You know, but let's hit the ground running and, you know, get right to it on the very first day of our E308 coverage. This is a game that everyone can't wait to see. Fable 2, and Morgan has the exclusive hands-on demo. To lead us on our quest and help us choose the path of good or evil are our guides, Fable 2 Senior Design Director Josh Atkins and Lead Level Designer Ian Wright. Thank you guys so much for dropping by. Yes, Thank no you. Problem. Good. All right, show us what you got here. All right, so we're going to run through. Ian's just joined my co-op game, and I am the uh, the shirtless wonder here. And I am through. I'm the beautiful woman. <laughs> and uh, our dog is leading up the leading us up the path here because uh, he thinks something's going on. So we're gonna he's we're gonna chase ahead. He is. He is. He's very wise. Oh, there he is, barking. And I'm gonna hold down the lookout trigger, which is the left trigger. And there's a bunch of hobs down there. So we're gonna go down, quickly dispatch with those guys. Okay, I'm gonna switch yeah. to a fireball, then I'll right. stay back here and I'll come in from range. And All right. Josh will use his melee skills. To, uh, some they, havoc, yeah. Man. And they tend to get scared run away. As you can see, once they're lit on fire, which is actually pretty funny. Um, that's actually one of the more humorous moments in the game. That's a nice trick you got yeah, there, the yeah, fireball. Exactly. <laughs> they, get, they get quite scared, so they're easy to pick off with a ranged attack. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I got all those guys. And uh, grab my orbs, because I'm an experienced junkie. And we'll run up the hill here. Um, this is a this is a uh, sunken town, so or a sunken village. Um, and so there's a lot of undead and creepy crawly creatures here. Oh, hollow Man. Mm. Yeah. There's one. Hollow there's man. one. These guys are called Hollow Men, and they're they're basically magical wisps that can reanimate corpses. So you, these particular ones are actually villagers, but they could be soldiers. They could be magic users. Right. You never really know what you're going to get. Yeah. No, we've we've leveled our our characters quite a bit here, so we're. We're, we're no match for these guys. <laughs> it's just kind of cool. It's my favorite part of, of an RPG when you just kind of over level and you can burn through guys, but you know, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, but players of the original game might recognize certain parts of this region. Obviously, this, this game's set 500 years after the first one, but um, there's, there's a few landmarks in here that, that players should recognize. Yeah. More Hollow Man, yeah, so they really don't want us going this way. And I'm casting my uh, my radial force push spell, which knocks them back since we got surrounded there. And I'll knock a few of them into the wall. Um, it does it does a lot, quite a bit of damage, both when you uh, hit them with it and then when you knock them into something. So it's a pretty effective spell. You have to position yourself the right way in order to use it most effectively. 
Yeah, and if you do find yourself surrounded, you can use the, uh, a surround spell that will hit everyone at once, and you can, by tapping the same button, you'll use the same spell, but a ranged version, so you can actually throw that surround spell. You know, and, yeah. It's quite accessible. That was the whole goal. That was Peter's big goal for us, was to make it the most accessible kind of combat game, but you, it's, where it, it's important to switch between combat styles. So, you know, switching between melee to range to magic has, has meaning in the game, but it's also really easy and anybody can do it. But to be really good at it, you have to learn to do it at the right time, and when an enemy's about to attack, if you shoot him in the head, he'll, you'll get extra experience, uh, do, do more damage, so it's quite, it's quite layered, but it's also very approachable. And here's sort of our iconic moment for those who are big Fable fans. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Oak Vale Bridge, but it's, uh, things have changed in this yeah, region quite Oak significantly. Fo yeah, it's a little run down there. Yeah, yeah 500 <laughs> years is, is a long time for a wooden bridge. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's Oak Vale, for those who, who don't know, is the town you grew up in in Fable 1. Yeah. And our dog is actually leading us down the path here. He's quite excited about something. Let's see what he's found. Uh, he's found a treasure chest. So oh, look at that. He's earning his keep. That's right. That's right. Those dog biscuits I gave him earlier are paying off. And uh, so now hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of this chest that yeah. will help us. This is, a, this is a scary area, and he's gotten us a rubber ball. Yeah, that's oh, great. well, Brilliant. that's more for him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's absolutely no use to yeah, us at but, all. But he's also given us a live forever potion. Okay, that is good. Yeah, exactly. So that'll get us through, although. We'll see how effective it is. Oh, right, right here are some Valverines. These are nasty creatures. One just knocked me straight to the ground. Oh, I'm right. They're fast. Yeah, these are fast and they're, they're tricky. Yeah, exactly. And even when you corner them, they've got like a leaping attack. They can get out, they can get behind you. We've made them some of the more difficult enemies of the game, actually. Yeah. And they're uh, so they well with fire. Yeah. They light on fire. And that becomes part of the strategy of how you, uh, you defeat them. Is, uh, is lighting them on fire does long-term damage to them. Uh, we'll get this guy with a big flourish here. Yeah, it's a big attack. Let's try to get him. Let's try to get him. Let's let him get out of the area. And there we go. He fell for it. He fell right between us. <laughs> Sucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we run down the path here. And it's quite, it's, it's really the aesthetic that I think the artists have captured is really quite powerful. I mean, it's really eerie. And yet Fable is such a stylized game. They've really done an amazing job bringing this uh, unbelievable universe to life and, and oh, so know. much variety. Something bad's go. happening. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm actually going to switch my spell to, uh, I think, the Sword of Damage spell, which are these flying swords, which are very useful against these guys. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And customizing your magic is, um, is is something else you can do this time. So even if, if you know two two players are both will users, they're very likely to have different spells powered up to different levels, triggered in different orders. Exactly. So you can really tailor the game to, to be the way you want it. And mixing up the styles is, is it works really well. You can get some good strategies in in, in co-op. It's actually really fun to be playing co-op. We've been, we've been playing a lot of single player. Um, I'm starting to play a lot of co-op just for fun in the office. And it's, it's pretty exciting. The game really handles it well. You, know, you can earn more experience if you do things together. Oh, there's the soldier. He's got spells. Uh-oh. Yeah, so they don't really any people tend not to think co-op when they think RPG. Exactly. That's actually one of the big things for us that's quite important and we think quite a, a big selling point of the game is that it's co-op over live, there's the orbs functionality and, and a way to, as a unique way to meet people. And then, you know, like I said, when you fight in this game, if, you know, if Ian, if we did this perfectly, which is quite challenging to do, if I knock a guy up in the air and Ian hits him with a spell, it'll give, it'll give extra experience. And these are, these are techniques that expert players can do, but you don't have to do it. Right. You know, it's, it it'll, the game will work even if you don't do that. You'll be, you can be successful. We're not requiring you to do it, but you can do something to practice You that. can do some really sort of pretty looking stuff. You can throw people in the air with a vortex spell, and then while they're all spinning around in a whirlwind, you can set them on fire and give you more experience and so on. So, yeah, there's a lot there. Okay, well, we can't wait to uh, check it out and play it for ourselves and throw people up in the air with our yeah. own vortex spells. Uh, Josh and Ian, thank you so much for this look at the game. We really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, now here's Adam and Kevin with a look at what else is on Back to Life. Thank you, Morgan. It really does. And guess what? We're going to be playing in October. We found that out.
because Microsoft got the E3 ball rolling early yesterday with the announcement of an immediate price cut on the 20 gig 360 and a new 60 gig model due out in August. Yeah, and at this afternoon's media briefing, they actually uh, started with demos from a bunch of highly anticipated games. We got to look at Fallout 3, which yeah. looks absolutely stunning. Yeah. And we're the 360 and the PC versions will have exclusive content. Only those two SKUs. And we also saw the first playable demo for Resident Evil 5, which demonstrated the game's online co-op mode. And then, of course, Gears of War 2 with its new five-player co-op board mode. Next up, Microsoft then announced a huge new system update coming to the 360 this fall. This introduces avatars to the console, which promise to interact with several upcoming games and community features. The biggest was the addition of Netflix. Netflix, excuse me. And this fall, users can watch films from their 360 at no extra charge. And of course, there were a ton of Xbox Live game announcements, including Portal, Still Alive, Galaga Legions, and Uno Rush. Uno! Uh, the games, the music games then took the stage though, and that's when everything shifted because we learned that Metallica's next album will be released as downloadable content for Guitar Hero 3 and Guitar Hero World Tour at the same time that the album is released in stores. Which is showing that's, how powerful that game is. Absolutely. And Rock Band 2 will feature over 80 songs in game, including tracks by Guns N' Roses, Bob Dylan, and ACDC, which was the most request band ACDC, by so many music fans. Yes. And then Microsoft announced the launch of Lips, which is a vocal game that lets you import songs from your Zune or from your iPod, thankfully. Yes. <laughs> you can get it, whatever you have. You guys can uh, import tracks from it. But it wasn't over yet. Finally, Square Enix capped off the event with release dates for their upcoming RPGs, along with word that, I still can't believe this, Final Fantasy 13 will be coming to the 360 yeah. day and day with the PS3 version. That's right, Final Fantasy 13 is no longer exclusive to the PS3. Square Enix didn't really show any new footage for the game, but we'll see if more comes out over the rest of E3. Yeah, all in all, we had a ton of rumors confirmed, and we had a shocker there at, at the finale. I don't think anybody was no. expecting to see that franchise on I, the 360. I, I think some kudos needs to go out to Microsoft. That didn't leak. Yeah, Something that absolutely. big, they really <laughs> a secret was actually kept for once. It's, it's, it's absolutely E3. amazing. Something that they didn't even mention in their own press conference, which I thought was interesting, Major Nelson uh, posted on his blog that there's a feature now for the uh, the Xbox yes. and the system update that's going to come that will allow you to rip your games potentially to the hard drive so you can play them without needing to load from a disc so games could load a lot faster. Exactly. Now you would still need the disc. Obviously, it's probably for anti-piracy. Right. It's unclear if the entire game always loads to the hard drive. Hopefully, we'll hear more, but that's a big change from Microsoft. Right. Now, if you missed out this morning, you can re-watch the Microsoft press conference in its entirety on our website. Go to g4tv.com slash e3 for details. And guys, remember, we'll be at Sony and Nintendo's media briefings with live coverage starting tomorrow at noon. And like today, both events will be brought to you commercial free. But right now, let's go over to Olivia, who's got a burning question. Burning. But first, I want to just thank our audience for showing up. <laughs> We got a lot going on, so do not move from your couches. Now, I have a question. One of Microsoft's biggest upcoming titles is Halo Wars, but instead of a first-person shooter, this title is a real-time strategy game. So, we want to know what other gaming franchise should have an RTS title. The choices are Gears of War, Resistance, or Grand Theft Auto. All right, we've got lots more E3 exclusives ahead, including hands-on time with Halo Wars, Silent Hill Homecoming, and the new Ghostbusters game, and then there's Fallout 3. And then there's more, yes. We'll be talking to more of the greats that make the games that you want. We'll get a visit from Silicon Knights president, Dennis Dyack is going to walk us through his epic loot fest to human. Yes, and as I just said, the fest is Todd Howard. Yes. We'll be coming by to take us inside the vault with Fallout 3. All that and tons more as G4's preview coverage of the biggest annual gaming event continues. Get up to the second E308 news, exclusive videos, screenshots, photos, even more at G4TV.com slash E3. We'll be right back, everybody. We have a lot more headed your way, so stay plugged in, because coming up, we let our inner Egon out to play with the highly anticipated Ghostbusters game. Plus, we begin the battle against the Covenant with Halo Wars. And did we mention an exclusive first look demo with the futuristic action RPG, Fallout 3? It's all new and all live, only on G4. E308 Live is brought to you by Hurl. Just relax, let go, and Hurl. Starts tonight at 9, only on G4.
It's exploitative. Eat it! Eat it! It's sensational. It appeals to your basest instincts, and you're gonna watch every minute of it. Introducing Hurl, a bold new take on reality TV. Five contestants enter an intense eating challenge, then stomach-churning test of stamina. The last one to blow groceries wins a cool grand. You're gonna love it, even if you pretend you don't. Hurl starts tonight at 9, only on G4. Crimes are an unfortunate part of our society. The field of criminal justice is full of men and women, both in the public eye and behind the scenes, working to secure our future. The ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice teaches the fundamentals of the criminal justice system and criminal justice skills. Graduates may be ready to pursue a broad spectrum of careers in the private sector, as well as entry-level positions involving criminal justice, including parole and probation, community corrections and court systems. Be one of the many dedicated Americans who participate in making our nation a better and safer place for us all. ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. I finished my questionnaire for eHarmony on September 6th and I was matched up with Lee on October 2nd. Anne Marie and I both were like, I I'm so excited when I saw your profile. I wanted to kind of get to that communication. Every eHarmony match is based on compatibility. That's why they're so special. And right now, you can go to eHarmony and review your matches absolutely free. Aren't you curious to see who you'd be matched with? Log on today and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. They help thousands, they'll help you too. One lump sum of cash they will pay to you. If you get long term payments but you need cash now, call JG Wentworth. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 Cash Now. This commercial changed my life. It all started when I used this free research service. A computer and a desire to succeed is all you need. With all the money I made, I bought a new home and a new car. My goal for next month, $60,000. Use your computer to make more. I love the freedom my home business offers. And the money just keeps getting better. Not working from home? Then you're missing out on your share of a billion dollar industry. Visit this website now. I make over $9,000 a month working part time. I make over $5,000 a month. Never thought I'd make this much right out of school. All you need is to visit this website. They showed me how to use the power of television to build real wealth. I'm making over $12,000 a month. Check it out yourself. You'll see why I love working from home. Ready for more wealth? Put your computer to work now. Start making more from your home by going to this website today. Log on to 82hbiz.com now. Closed doors through the ropes and past the security guards. Yeah, there's so much stuff we really need a head start. Yes. Even with three days of exclusive live coverage from the floor of E3, we don't want to risk missing a single game. We do not. That would be awful. But let's hear what you at home think with a video viewer mail. I was wondering what do you think was going to be the biggest game reveal of this year's E3? Wow. 
That's a loaded question and a half. I mean, we haven't, <laughs> we've only seen, we've only really scratched the surface of a few of the games so far. Final Fantasy 13 was a big reveal. Yeah. Um, being available for the, X for, uh, the Xbox 360, that was huge. You could hear it, like the gasps in the audience were palpable. Yeah, and it's it's tough because I mean, there's so many established games from anything from Spore to a Little Big Planet right. to Gears of War 2. You know, we've seen these games. It's the games that we haven't seen like the Final Fantasy 13s that make it impossible to answer a question like that <laughs> so early on in the game. But right. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm still I'm a Gears fanboy through and through. And after seeing a little bit more footage of it, seeing that Unreal Engine push so many enemies on screen to be mowed down with a you know a minigun, right. that brings a tear to my eye. That was actually an impressive demo. And that's Single probably tear. what I was the most impressed with, like at the show, the mo the part where I was like, <gasps> yay! So the I mean, avatars? Oh no, we're still talking about. No. You you know you're gonna make an avatar. I'm you, going to because you, I have to, not because I want to. You'll upgrade the clothing too. I guarantee it. All right, all right. Let's go <laughs> over to Olivia. All right, you guys. It is time once again to visit the home of our old pal Pyramid Head and say hi to all those hot yet horrifying nurses. Adam's got a hands-on look at the next chapter in the Silent Hill series. Get ready for homecoming. Konami's Silent Hill Homecoming is the sixth installment in the ultra-eerie franchise. This time, you slowly creep in the shoes of returning war veteran Alex Shepard, who's in search of his missing brother and father and somehow finds his way to Silent Hill. PlayStation 3 and 360 title will feature a new combat system, a plethora of weaponry, an upgraded enemy AI, and of course, enough scares to keep you up for days. Joining us today for this hands-on exclusive lead combat designer from Double Helix, David Verfaye. Thanks so much for dropping by and showing us Silent Hill Homecoming. Thanks, man. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, obviously, you guys haven't worked on a Silent Hill game before. Um, what's it like trying to approach something that's a fairly established world and franchise? Well, it's a big challenge for us. We wanted to be very careful and be true to the spirit and feeling of Silent Hill, and I think we've accomplished that. But we've also tried to sort of make the game more accessible to the larger public, and I think we've achieved that also. Um, now, where does this fall into the overall storyline of Silent Hill? It's a separate story, but it takes place uh, largely in Silent Hill also. Now, looking at the game right now, what, have you done anything with the controls, obviously, in, the, in an effort to make it more accessible to more players? Absolutely. There's a lot of enhancements that have been made. One of the big ones that people will notice right away is the camera system. It's a freeform controlled camera system that you control with the right analog stick. Uh, likewise, the navigation has been updated. It's an eight-way uh, strafe navigation, so whichever direction you move the stick is uh, the direction your character will move. Uh, another neat thing we've done in terms of controls is we've given the player the ability to go into first person look. So that's an ability to sort of examine your environment in a more uh, detailed and close way. Now, uh, inside of the game here, uh, where, where are we in, inside of Silent Hill Homecoming right now and, and what's about to happen or what has happened? Okay, so Silent Hill Homecoming is the story of Alex Shepard who returns home from the war. Uh, he's been having some disturbing nightmares, so he returns home, and when he returns home, he finds the town in sort of a state of disarray and his brother missing. So the story is uh, his quest for searches or answers for those. Uh, and right now we're in the hotel, which is sort of the earlier part of the game still. Uh, we've traveled throughout four floors of the hotel and have gotten sort of to the end of this level. Uh, and right now our objective is to uh, search out the greenhouse and find information there. Now obviously when you go searching things inside of Silent Hill, there's usually something very creepy and unpleasant that, that's waiting for you. Um, are we going to see the revisiting of some of uh, those, like Pyramid Head and stuff from the older Silent Hill games? There are definitely some uh, characters that make return visits. I think uh, fans of the series are going to be quite happy. Uh, right now what's going on is a, one of our real-time transitions to a hell state. Uh, what's really cool about this one is it happens all in real time. You can move around during it. It dynamically happens in front of your eyes. So. Um, now, 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 what is this hell state? Is, is it a state that the character's in, or has the environment actually changed? So the, the environments completely change, uh, and a lot of environments you'll visit first sort of in a normal state, and then it'll transform in before your eyes, and it'll be a whole different environment. So you get to experience things in sort of a before and after state. Um, now, right here, we actually have an individual. Is, is he in the hell state? Is he real? I mean, usually when you run into someone in Silent Hill, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit dubious. Yeah, well, so we don't want to talk too much about that, but uh, this is the character called the mayor, uh, which you meet earlier in the game. Here you meet him, uh, and this is an example of a dialogue tree in which you sort of have what different the options to steer the, the dialogue You're in different directions. Uh, some of the dialogue trees, the options just allow you to get more information for the 
real hardcore players that want to find out more about the history and lore of Silent Hill, they can branch into those dialogues. Other ones have real options that uh, affect the outcome of the game, so it's a neat addition to the game. So, so this is a game that you can probably play through two or three times and, and, and do get something different each time. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of replay value in this game. Um, now, uh, some, some other elements of the Silent Hill series that really is indicative of Silent Hill. Number one, the radio. Is it back or will it be used in the exact same way? Absolutely. The radio and the flashlight are both back. Uh, the radio is very eerie. When you turn around a corner and you hear the static crackling of the radio, it really gets the senses heightened. And the flashlight is back. It is amazing. It affects gameplay. It creates some beautiful visuals. So I think people will really enjoy it. Now, obviously, I asked about some of the older monsters that are in Silent Hill 5. What are some of the new ones that, that we can be looking for? Um, and, and are they, well, what are they like? There's uh, an amazing breadth to the monsters in Silent Hill. Uh, there's some slow characters that have ranged attacks, like the smog creature. Uh, there's fast characters that like to get in and close, like the uh, feral dog. Uh, and there's also a whole set of boss characters. And in fact, we're uh, starting to see uh, an introduction to one of the bosses oh. here. Uh, this boss's name is called uh, Sepulchre. Uh, all the bosses play very uh, tightly wound stories. Uh, and here you're seeing the introduction of this boss. We spent a lot of time on the boss fights, uh, trying to make them large, dramatic moments. Uh, they're multi-stage events, uh, and there's a lot of strategy involved in them. They're almost like little puzzles. There's different ways to defeat each stage, and it's sort of like you have to figure out the best way for your play style. Um, now, obviously, uh, you as the collective, obviously Shiny's also part of the new Double Helix. Um, you've done Buffy games and stuff, but nothing that's like full-on horror. Um, what, what are the challenges in trying to make a horror game that, you know, keep people scared throughout it, all of its duration? Yeah, so some of the big challenges were trying to get the atmosphere right. That's one of the big things about Silent Hill. So trying to keep it uh, creepy and disturbing and to create that level of tension. And I think we've been able to do that through some pretty amazing storytelling and, you know, some action sequences such as these. Yeah, which we're watching right here. Well, I, I don't know if it's, it's fair to me to ask, but uh, about how many of these uh, boss battles can we look forward to inside of Silent Hill Homecoming? Uh, there are multiple boss fights in Silent Hill Homecoming, and each as large as this. So you can see he's just destroyed the last uh, of the meat sacks, and we're now going into phase two. Whoa. Uh, this is a whole separate stage, and... Uh, I think this is where we want to stop it and leave a little bit for uh, the players to uh, figure out how this stage works in the game. Wow, that's very impressive. David, thank you so much for stopping by and showing us Silent Hill Homecoming. When can we hope to play it? All of this year. Awesome, awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much. And with that, let's head it back over to you. Thanks, Adam. You know, it's nice to see the game will probably put us back on our men. Yeah. So you guys expect to make that appointment to your therapist later this fall. Of course, we're all obsessed with E3, but let's take a moment to open a window into the outside world. Here is Layla Kaylee with the only news you need to know. Nintendo here in Hollywood. The feed with Layla Kaylee. Hey guys, here are your top non-gaming stories for the 14th of July. Well, despite the meltdown of the servers and a lot of bad press, Apple has emerged victorious. They've already sold over a million iPhones since the launch on Friday. And of course, an iPhone isn't an iPhone without some fabulous applications. The App Store did a brisk business over the weekend. iPhone and iPod Touch users have already downloaded more than 10 million applications, and it doesn't look like things are going to slow down anytime soon. Now, sometimes the most exciting rumors in technology are just that, rumors. Amid all the iPhone excitement last week, a Hollywood Reporter story said Google's founders talked about working on its own Google-branded mobile phone to compete with the iPhone. Immediately, bloggers started speculating on a potential G phone running Google's mobile Android program. Unfortunately, the rumors were just that, rumors. The Hollywood Reporter misheard Google's founders, who actually said they were not producing their own phone. Seems like a fairly important distinction. All right. And finally, Hellboy beat up the Golden Army and the box office this weekend, taking in more than $35 million. The comic book sequel beat Will Smith's Hancock, which also did well with $33 million. Brendan Fraser's Journey to the Center of the Earth opened in third and took home more than $20 million. There was one epic fail, though, this weekend as moviegoers failed to meet Dave at theaters. The Eddie Murphy comedy cost $55 million to make, but made just $5.3 million. All right, guys, that's all for today. But don't worry, the feed doesn't stop here. Stay tuned to G4 all day and look for the feed ticker at the bottom of your screen. We'll have all the news you need to know as it happens. I'm Layla Cayley, and you've just been fed. Thanks, Layla. Now, everybody here loves games. I know they'll all admit to that. That's right. But the real question is, okay. are you, you guys out here and you at home, any good at them? I have a feeling they are. But you yeah. guys, get ready for someone to be owned when Championship Gaming Series comes to G4, the world's 
best professional gamers battle for global supremacy, over a million dollars in prizes, and the highly coveted title of world champion. Do not miss CGS starting this Wednesday night at 9, right after our E308 live coverage. Visit G4TV.com slash CGS for details. Now, where do you, do you see that? Where do you guys think you're they're going? Not, uh, they are not going anywhere. You're I'm sitting you that back right down, now. you're going to stay right there yeah. because we have got more demos coming up right after the break. I think it's the most demos we've ever had. Yes, with our E308 preview show returns, we will play Halo Wars live on our stage. You guys do not want to miss it. Someone's excited. I am. E308 Live is brought to you by Championship Gaming Series. Battle for Global Supremacy starts Wednesday night at 9. Dell XPS M1530 with Windows Live Photo Gallery. Load, edit, and share your photos. And for a limited time, get a flip video camcorder. All for just $9.99 or finance for less than $2 a day. Go to Dell.com or call now. Dell, yours is here. In nine days, Carl Conrad, the coolest geek in the world, will be watching Comic Con Await live on G4 with exclusive coverage of Wolverine, Watchmen, Star Trek, Terminator Salvation, and Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Comic-Con 08 Live starts July 24th, only on G4. Unleash your inner rock star. It's our hero on tour. Rated everyone 10 and up. Go for that rock! I am so beautiful. Good to see you again. It's slipping! It's slipping! Oh, stupid tongues. Excuse me, boys, what are you drinking? We're drinking Coke. No, no, you're not. It says Coke Zero on the bottle. Do you know why we don't like you, eyeball? Why? Because you are a big, fat liar. <gasps> I am not fat. I'm not. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. In this home, a family grows. Children learn and play. Bonds are built. But before it was a house, it was a detailed drawing on a plan. The bachelor degree program in construction management in the School of Drafting and Design at ITT Technical Institute offers educational opportunities that can help students prepare for challenging and rewarding careers in the construction industry. There's a demand for individuals with knowledge and skills to manage construction projects. The construction industry needs professionals who can oversee construction projects in accordance with the plans and specifications. Thanks to the hard work and dedication of many, this dream became a home. There are still many more to be built. ITT Technical Institute School of Drafting and Design. Education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. Agent. I'm sorry. I didn't quite get that. Agent. I'm sorry. A Spit out your dry gum and chew another piece already, or we'll find you. Got it. Leave the ram. The ridiculously long-lasting gum. New Stride Sweet Berry. With over a billion movies delivered so far, it's movie time. Netflix. A J.G. Wentworth success story. Felicia and the annuity. A few years ago, I inherited an annuity from my grandfather. I started receiving monthly payments from his insurance company. Then everything seemed to happen at once. Felicia's employer moved to another state, and she was left unemployed. Your money starts to go pretty fast when there's no cash coming in. J.G. Wentworth knows that a big change in life circumstances can change how you look at your annuity. I heard about J.G. Wentworth through TV ads. If you have an annuity that is no longer serving your needs and you need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth. You'll get a free appraisal and have all your questions answered. Don't wait. The sooner you call, the faster you'll have your money. Call now. J.G. Wentworth helped me, and they made it really easy. It's your money. Use it when you need it. 
call 866-433-9717. We are live with all the best games, guests, and exclusive features. Now, over the next three days, G4 will be covering all the big surprises and shocking announcements of E308. We'll have all the breaking news as soon as it comes straight from the mouths of the companies and creators. How about we go over to Kevin and Olivia, who are ready to give you your Spartan fix and then some. That's right. Thanks, Morgan. Now, if you want to whack people with gravity hammers, then keep playing Halo 3. That's fine. If you want something a little more strategic, then Halo Wars is the answer. That's right. The new installment in the series takes place at the beginning of the conflict we've come to know and features a whole new style of play. Get ready for an exclusive hands-on demo. What do you do after completing one of the most successful video game trilogies of all time? You turn back the clock for an earlier look at the Halo universe. Ensemble Studios' Halo Wars is the prequel to Combat Evolved, where the first battles with the Covenant take place. The epic real-time strategy game features new units and vehicles, cooperative gameplay, and Xbox Live Online multiplayer. All right, everybody, Dave Pottinger, lead designer for Ensemble Studios, is here to our assault. Thanks for dropping by, Thank sir. And bringing up Halo Wars, everyone is so excited about this. But I want to get into the storyline uh, for Halo Wars, and I want to know where does it fall and where does it um, come up in the Halo universe? So the cool thing that we got to do is actually the best part of all superhero stories is the, you know, how they got to be superheroes. Mm -hmm. So we get to wind the clock back. I and love it's, a, it. it's a prequel. Baby Master Chief. Uh, well, not <laughs> quite that. No. <laughs> okay. we, 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 we do get to give you something good there. Uh, we're 20 years before the events of Halo 1, and the cool thing is we get to give you multiple Spartans. It's nice. back when the Spartans were a true force and right. a bigger a bigger army and Master Chief, you know, he's cool and all that. He's not uh, right. You're doing some stuff in the other well, part. Well, managing of the just one unit on the field and trying to charge a base would be a little interesting yeah, too. Well, I think you need more than one for an RTS. Yes, exactly. Uh, why why go the RTS route exactly? I mean, everybody knows Halo as you know the the, the first person shooter, even though it originally was supposed to be this RTS. Why right. take it there? Um, I think. From a, from a studio passion, Ensemble Studios, you know, we've done RTS games forever, and we wanted to bring that gameplay to the console. Mm -hmm. Halo was a perfect match for that, for that endeavor. You know, we love Halo, we're, we're super huge fans, and bringing that and, and marrying that with our gameplay has just been excellent. You know, real-time strategies have had a hard time translating over to consoles, so how does the control scheme work in Halo Wars? Yeah, what are we seeing here, Dave? Because it yeah, looks, it looks I'm seeing some very synchronized Warthog uh, driving here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of our senior designers, Justin Rouse, is driving the Warthogs around. Um, the controls were completely rethought for the 360 and, and the gameplay too. Uh, selection, we, given that we've got large armies and whatnot, mm -hmm. selection is huge. So we spend a lot of uh, time streamlining that. You select with A, you command or do your primary attack with X. And we have these really cool special abilities like running over guys with a warthog or yes. pucking grenades at people. <laughs> you, know, you do those with Y. Um, Justin will probably train a Spartan here pretty soon. And Spartans have the best special ability in the game. They can jack enemy vehicles. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we'll show that off here in a little bit as we train that. You can see the, the base is there, as, as, which is the center of operations on the planet for the UNSC. Now, so like that group select there, you know, yes. real quickly, there's obviously there was no click and drag or press and drag right. of the button. So how do you exactly. how do you go between single unit, multiple right. unit, so entire really, screen it's selection? Really you, you move it across here over a single unit, you press mm -hmm. A, you get that one. You press down on A and you get a paintbrush and anything that unit touches or that paintbrush touches will be selected. Okay. Then we have a couple of really handy buttons. Uh, the left bumper and right bumper do all army and local army on the screen. Do you, do you, do you believe this will finally silence all the naysayers who say you can't have an RTS game I think, I with, think the, so. with a console controller? I think so. And to do that, you know, we, it's not a port. Right. Um, we built it from the ground up for the 360. It's customized for that. We've streamlined the gameplay and boiled it down really to the essentials of RTS. Now, uh, one of the essentials of any real-time strategy game, of course, resource management. Uh, yeah. What, what, so are what we... do you do in Halo? Yeah. What resources? Well, so it's, it's an ensemble game. As you know, we've done all the Age of Empires games. So the balance between guns and butter, economy and military, is always an important thing. We always we... choose butter, by the way. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> <love> Delicious. <laughs> and bacon. Yes. Uh, so oh, the, turkey bacon's the best. <laughs> so the, the resources are streamlined down. There's one resource in the game, but that continual investment in economy is there throughout the game. Mm. And But the, the big focus is on combat. It's Halo. People want to blow stuff up. Exactly. Yeah, we want to show off big, large army, epic combat, and that's really where you want to spend your time. Now, I want to ask about the campaign. Will the Covenant be playable in single-player single mode? Not in the campaign, but we did just announce okay. that Covenant are playable in the game in skirmish mode. So you'll be able to get your evil side on as you play. Very nice. <laughs> Very cool. And what about the, the UNSC Marines and, and the Covenant? Are they, are they the only two factions that we'll be seeing in the game? Uh, that is, those are the only two playable ones. Justin's jacking a couple of rays here. That's pretty cool to watch. 
Um, nice. So we do have uh, those playable. You know, the campaign follows the story of this ensemble crew of uh, the Spirit of Fire as they battle the Evil Covenant. And then in skirmish mode, you can play UNSCR Covenant. Now, what are these units we're seeing on the screen right now? So Justin's driving a couple of uh, big, nasty scorpions. We've got some Marines there. Mm -hmm. You see, we've uh, got the wraith that we jacked, has the Spartan head over it, so there's a Spartan inside of it. And now we've engaged in this huge, big battle, and Justin right. will probably call on the Spirit of Fire to help us out here. And that Spartan there, helmet he above the did. unit, the Spartan helmet above the unit, that signifies that, hey, this is now a vehicle under your control. Yeah, uh, the Color has, scheme changes that, to... That has a Spartan in it. I mean, Spartans are great combat units, but mm -hmm. they drastically buff the abilities of all the vehicles that they're in. Now, how much freedom do you guys have as the developers when it comes to developing new unit types and new vehicles? I mean, are you beholden there's to new, the... there's a lot of new ones, right? Right. I mean, what, we need to sit down and look at the game. You'd expect from the first-person shooter side, the Covenant would be really well fleshed out, mm -hmm. and they are. And they're actually quite pretty easy. The UNSC, as it happens, was the harder one to do. Right. Bungie's been great. Uh, we work with them closely, but it, it is our game. You know, we are fleshing out the units that we need. We've added a, a couple melee units to the game to really give it that RTS vibe. Now, I'm right to say that a lot of these locations look pretty pretty familiar from the previous Halos? Uh, yeah, certainly you know, Halo is a pretty vibrant FPS, right? Yeah. And we wanted to capture that. It's actually one of the things that Ensemble Studios games are known for, too. So, you know, Bruce Shelley has a saying, the sun always shines in Age of Empires and in Halo Wars, too. Very nice. Well, what about the characters? I mean, so it looks like uh, similar locations. And do you have all the returning characters? Did you add any more? Well, we're, we're, remember, we're a prequel, so we don't have too many of oh. the uh, existing characters people know. Right. But Do you know, we have the man cannons, at least? I mean, I know that was sort of a Halo 3 kind of thing, <laughs> but is it, am I going to be shooting any of my units across the screen? Uh, not with an actual man cannon. Okay. But they can get shot across the screen. 20 years nice. ago, they didn't have that. I'm sorry. I just thought, you know, maybe there's a beta prototype man well, cannon lying around the Stop base or something. It. All right. So, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's Halo. And I think the, right. the, the story that Graham Devine, who's our lead writer, wrote, it's going to make every Halo fan really, really happy. You know what? That's such a great line. It's Halo. Like, people love it no matter what. Right. Relax. Relax. It's, it's Halo. still Halo. It's going to be yeah. great. Um, you mentioned skirmish mode, you know, playable uh, covenant. Uh -huh. We've talked about single player. What about some co op? Yeah, so uh, the campaign is playable in co op which is pretty cool. That's incredible. Um, it's been designed with that in mind. And then obviously skirmish play, you can team up with a buddy locally over live. Now, how, how is the co-op going to work? Are we sharing resources as a single team, or is it two different entities both playing together? To uh, it complete? depends. You, you can play actually like, true co-op where you do share things, mm -hmm. but you can play just on the same team as well. Um, yeah. and have different economies and whatnot. That's great. Now, when can fans start uh, sleeping outside their local Best Buys and GameStop? Yes. Well, this? they can do that tomorrow. But it'll be a long <laughs> wait. Um, probably spring next year. Nice. Spring of next year. Very exciting. Very cool. Uh, fantastic game. Thank you guys for showing it off. Yes, well, thank you. Really, really. It's an honor to have it here play. Well, and I can't wait to get my hands on it and see how the control works. We can't wait to hear it too. All right. Thanks again thanks for coming so on. Thank you. Really appreciate Very it. Thank you. All right, guys. It's now time to see what the masses think about this new take on the series. Adam and Morgan. Please take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, guys. Now, despite the fact that you hardcore fans may be stuck Thanks. at home for E3, that doesn't mean we have forgotten about you. Oh, today we're seeing what our viewers think about Halo Wars and more. It's the virtual audience powered by Stick Cam. All right, joining us first tonight is Brent from Florida. What is on your mind, Brent? Yeah, most Halo fans are fans of first person shooters. But how easily will Halo Wars make the transition to the RTS genre? I actually really like this because I'm a big fan of real-time strategy games, and it's always been hard to get, you know, fans of first-person shooters to recognize that they're a really vital and interesting and strategic type of game. So I hope it gets a lot of first-person shooter fans to at least check out an RTS. Try it. You might like it. I, I, I think there's definitely a, a good chance with that because there's enough of it that's recognizable from Halo, so right. you're not trying to learn everything all over again. And wow! Did that control scheme look like it's yeah. going to work on a console? So I think all the pieces are there. So guess what? Try yourself a strategy game. All right, next, let's talk to Joseph from Gladboro. Go ahead, Joseph. Um, Microsoft shocked us all when they announced Final Fantasy 13 for the 360. Is there any chance we'll see Halo Wars on the, for the PlayStation 3? I, yeah. No. <laughs> Halo is a franchise that's incredibly associated with Microsoft. Yes. It just wouldn't even make any sense. I don't think that my brain would comprehend such a crossover. Right, and it's also it was, it's published by Microsoft. Right. Which, I mean, and you have to think, remember, Final Fantasy is published by an independent third party, which is Square Enix. They have a little more latitude about how to make those decisions. Um, if that ever were to happen, my I, brain would scramble. I was I wouldn't in bizarre it. world, and I'd be all scared. <laughs> it's bizarre out there. <laughs> all right, finally, we have Mike from Texas. What's your question, Mike? Well, Halo Wars looks great, but what about the other Halo game that was supposed to be announced? Was that just a rumor? Okay, we actually have no announcements at this very second. Yeah about what's going on. Which means it's a rumor. Which means it is a rumor. We have no new information for you. We have no new rumors yeah. that, that people haven't heard already. Um, but you know, there is that 
special thing. People love countdown clocks, don't they? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, of course, people like seeding things out there to get the, you know, get the minds going. But. Right, so there is a, a countdown clock on Bungie.net. It ends Wednesday night, so we'll be able to tell you everything at that point. Yeah. All right, virtual audience, thank you so much for coming by. We'll be checking in with you guys throughout the week. Now let's go back to Kevin and Olivia. <laughs> Hey guys. hey guys, thanks for coming back to us. Right. Coming up. Right. Can I just say, yeah. you guys are so much nicer to virtual audience than I know, we are. you You're barely, take a you barely from made us. fun of anybody. Come on. They were, so they were actually all they great. Were good no. No. You got to make up the rumors, by the way. Just make them up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's everything Halo from here on they out. Have it. <laughs> everything Halo. Coming up, we'll be talking to Silicon Knife President Dennis Dyack about his upcoming action RPG epic, Too Human. Come on. Yes, you guys. We now across the streams as we go hands-on for a world premiere demo of the new Ghostbusters game. And later on, we experience the apocalypse with Bethesda's Todd Howard. We bring you the exclusive world premiere. Adam, are you still giddy with excitement? Yes, I'm still giddy with excitement. We got a hands-on demo of Fallout 3, and you will see more than you did at the E3 press conference yes. right here, folks. And everyone at home, keep your iPod or Zoom fed with the latest E3 08 videos. Download G4 special E3 podcast. Check out the X Play feed at g4tv.com slash podcast. You won't, you won't regret it. That's right. Stay right there, everybody. G4's E3 08 preview show continues right after this. E3 08 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Everybody was The battle for global supremacy. The Championship Gaming Series starts tomorrow at 9, right after E3. Part of G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer. Your teeth are a living part of your body. And over time, the enamel begins to weaken from the inside. But now you can help rebuild your teeth. New Trident Extra Care, the only gum with Recaldin, a unique form of calcium that penetrates into and strengthens tooth enamel. Trident Extra Care, chew strong. I enjoyed getting the matches, waking up in the morning and you know going to my inbox and it was like a scratch off lottery ticket. It's the way I described it with Amory and I. We both were like, oh, I'm so excited when I saw your profile. You know, I wanted to kind of get to that communication. It was just easy. Everything just flowed. It was almost like we knew each other, but we just hadn't seen each other. Mm -hmm. Amory is the absolute best. I mean, as long as I have her, that's it. <laughs> Log on and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com. We are a very close family. Me and my mom are like best friends. I have a degree in computer drafting. When we went to ITT Tech and we saw the drafting program, I just thought this would be her place. And it was a great school because it was a lot of hands-on. Uh, my mom was the one that helped me decide to go to ITT Tech. One evening we were coming home, we happened to be driving by, and I just pulled in the parking lot and said, let's go see what they have to offer. And I started the next day. The teachers, they were very nice, very friendly. Like if you needed to stay for a while and need help with your work, they'd help you. My passion is coaching girls ice hockey. That was another big thing. I had time to do things that I enjoyed while going to school. But then at graduation, they gave us a rose to give to the person that influenced you the most. So I gave it to my mom. Really, if it wasn't for her pushing me to go, I'd, <laughs> I probably would have still been at home. <laughs> I'm extremely proud of you. It's been a wonderful experience to watch you grow and become a real woman. <laughs> we are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052. Hey, Brad's phone. Brad doesn't have AT&T, which means we've got no bars here in France. So, thanks for the call about the room that's become available at the Five Star Hotel. That's great news, only we won't get it! <laughs> Looks like old French toast here is going to take this place instead. <laughs> Isn't he cute? For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. For a limited time, get our exclusive LG Shine for only $49.99. Hi, welcome to Progressive.com. How can I help you? Well, I haven't shopped for car insurance in a while. And you're worried that you've been paying too much, right? Yeah. So how can I know I'm getting a good deal? We can compare your Progressive Direct rate with other top companies. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Look at the deal we just got him. 
That's a new pair of shoes. Yeah, or a big tricked out name tag. Making sure you get a great deal. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Play phone where you'll find over thousands of MP3 ringtones, games, and wallpapers. Get I'm So Hood by DJ Khaled. Text DK42 to 77888. If you like I Won't Tell by Fat Joe, text JG42 to 77888. For Side of Your Neck by Dem Franchise, text FY42 to 77888. Or to get Hit the Dance Floor by DJ Onk, text KN42 to 77888. Monthly subscription for only $9.99. Standard text message and carrier rates apply. See terms and conditions at playphone.com. Does it look like I forgot how to tie it? <laughs> Everybody, welcome back! Very special day. <laughs> it's G4's Woo! E3 08 preview show presented by Wendy's. How much do you love Wendy's? Let's I just love dipping a, a fry second. and a frosty is and just a dream come true. They're junior yeah. bacon cheeseburgers? Mm. How do they get them into squares? Square patties. That's Square amazing. cows? Who knows? Today, we're skipping the hype and getting right into it. We've got a hands on demo pretty much of every hot game this year. That's right. I think we have more demos than we've ever had for any E3. And all this week, you guys, we will be coming to you live from E3 with even more demos, like I said, and interviews and pretty much anything else we can get our hands on. Mm -hmm. So far, we've actually had a chance to play Halo Wars. We yes. saw some Fable 2, Silent Hill Homecoming, but nothing yet that really drips with 80s nostalgia. I think it's missing. Yeah. Or slime, if that's what you're getting at. Is that what you're getting at? Some slime, yeah, some well, green well, slime. Well, 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 now our next game answers a very important question. What do you do when someone asks you if you're a god? Admit it. You say yes! <laughs> you know, most movie tie-ins are, are rushed to meet a release date and, and the quality suffers, but in yeah. an odd turn of events, Ghostbusters the video game is really the closest thing that you're, you're getting to an actual new yeah. movie, and Morgan has the world premiere demo. The return of the Ectomobile, Proton Packs, and the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man can only mean one thing, the next chapter in one of the biggest science fiction comedies of all time. Sierra's Ghostbusters The Video Game puts you in the role of a new recruit who joins the fearless foursome. Written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, the game features voice acting by the original cast, new ghost hunting weapons, big boss battles, multiplayer action, and our favorite floating green goo, Slimer. Joining us today for the world premiere hands-on demo of Ghostbusters, the video game, associate producer, Mr. Ryan French. Thank you so much for dropping by and bringing us the game. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to take a look at this on the PS3, but it's not only going to be available for the PS3. Right, PS3, 360 PC for this version, and then there's a stylized version for the Wii and PS2, and then a third version for the DS. So everybody's going to be able to get this yep. in some form or another. All right, you have Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. He's writing the script. They're both writing the script for that. How is that working with them? Great. They helped us a lot with bringing the original Ghostbusters authenticity to the game and keeping the new story in line with the story that came out in the movies. I mean, were you surprised at all how excited they were to work on this project? I mean, video games, a lot of celebrities, a lot of people think, oh, video games is just throwaway. It's for kids. They both really got into it. But in addition, we also got Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray and a lot of the other talent from the original movies. So we've got the whole ensemble back together. And we also really appreciate that Sony Pictures Consumer Products um, were willing to share the IP with everyone. That doesn't always happen, which is key. So what was it like working with Bill Murray? Well, his VO is the most recent to come in, and he brings a lot of the comedy to the Ghostbusters team and having him stuff come in really pulls the whole ensemble together. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Who, who are you? Who are you playing? You play as the rookie Ghostbuster, the fifth Ghostbuster, the experimental equipment technician. <laughs> and basically that means so. you're the guinea pig for all the dangerous new stuff. Uh, Ray and Egon don't need to wear the, the dangerous stuff anymore, so they've got it on you, and they just kind of send you in first to, to go clean up. But see, that, may, that means you get all the best toys. Yeah, you get all the best toys and you're right at the right in the action at all times. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the gameplay mechanic. How's basic gameplay going to work? Uh, it's a third person action adventure, so you're controlling the rookie with dual stick control and there's obviously uh, combat where you are blasting a ghost and capturing them with the capture beam and the proton beam and trapping them. But then, like you see here, uh, you're also using the PK meter to and the pair goggles to hunt through the environments and find the other ghosts that are hiding from you. Some are gonna jump out and attack you, try to turn you into a ghost yourself. But a lot of the others are kinda hiding and you need to track them down. Let's talk a little bit about the money system. 
Well, you may notice as, as he's playing through that we are, you get money mm -hmm. for catching ghosts and you're also docked money for destroying objects in the world. The whole world is very destructible and you're gonna cause thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage right. as you're going through. But luckily, you get to upgrade your equipment as you go with the money you earn, but the city is footing the bill for everything you destroy. Right, so maybe you'll earn a hundred bucks after yep. you bill them for a hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about the physics engine you're gonna be using. I mean, you can see these destructible environments here. Yeah, well, the physics engine is proprietary to Terminal Reality, the guys making the game down in Dallas, Texas. They've been working on this engine for years, and this is the first next-gen version. It's called the Infernal Engine, and the physics portion of it is called Velocity, which is an apt name because all these physics objects are flying all over the place all the time, as you can see. So what, so what kind of environments are we going to see? Are we going to see uh, some environments from the movies, or are we going to see environments that are sort of all new? You're going to see revisits to a lot of familiar environments, but there's going to be a lot of new stuff too. All right, let's talk about some of the new weapons that are in the game. Well, an interesting thing is that we are calling it all equipment, not weapons, because these guys are scientists, not soldiers. Mm -hmm. And so, the you know, you have the neutrona wand and the proton pack and the PKE meter and the paragoggles, but we're also adding a bunch of new equipment types. So we've got the dark matter generator, the Mason collider, the slime blower, slime tether, and the boson dart. So what does the slime tether do? Slime tether sticks ghosts and physics objects to each other or to any surface in the world. That sounds exciting. I'm imagining the possibilities you can do with that. Oh yeah, you can. Well, it helps a lot when you're fighting ghosts to stick them to things to kind of slow them down. And then you can also use it in puzzles. So if you're on a team. Is it that you give your team orders or are you kind of along for the ride? Well, you're the rookie Ghostbuster, so right. you're the you're the greenhorn, and they're telling you what to do. So they're chattering back and forth on the radio the whole time, and so they're strategizing as they go how they're going to approach each situation. And so you just kind of need to play off their lead. You're not escorting them anywhere. Right. Yeah, they're kind of escorting you. Okay. But then they but then once they get you know when things go crazy, they send you in first. No, and, oh, we that looks dangerous. Send the new guy. Who is the character modeled after? Um, uh, me. You? Yeah. Really? Yep. They needed a That's standard. Awesome. <laughs> they needed a standard, corn-fed Midwest average-looking dude. Didn't have to pay. Yep. Actor that they didn't have to pay. All right. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the multiplayer? Well, the big reveal for multiplayer is going to be coming up at Comic Con. We're going to have a panel with a lot of the Ghostbusters talent, so you'll be able to find out a lot there. But right now, I can tell you that we're going to have different versions of multiplayer on the different SKUs, and that you're going to be able to play online on Xbox Live and PSN. That was a big, fantastic, I'll tell you later. But fortunately, actually, G4 I is going to be at Comic-Con, so we'll be covering all of that. Um, when is Ghostbusters the video game going to be hitting store shelves? This fall. This fall? Well, we cannot wait. Ryan, thank you so much for stopping by and bringing us Ghostbusters the video game. Now, for even more Ghostbusters, be sure to head to g4tv.com slash e3. And right now, let's head back over to Kevin. Morgan. Now, earlier, we asked viewers what other gaming franchise should have an RTS title. Well, we've totaled up the responses, and our viewers said that they would love to see a Gears of War real-time strategy. We're yeah. taking actually 51% yeah. of the vote. Pretty impressive. I would yeah. love to see little chainsaw bayonet soldiers <laughs> That's chopping not surprising. Each other up. It's not surprising it's percentage. Sweet. You guys, stay with us because G4's E3 OA preview show is really far from over. We've got a whole other hour coming up. We've got all of 2008's biggest titles here, ready to be shown for the very first time. That's right. Coming up, we go inside Too Human with Dennis Kayak to get the latest on the game that's been a decade in the making. You have to see it. The all-new season of Code Monkeys continues. Give me the best boob job 200 bucks can buy. Yeah. All new episodes Sunday night at 10, only at G4. My name is Wilfredo Siliezar. Um, I'm a graduate from ITT Tech. Um, my name is Manuel Silazar. I also went to ITT Tech. We were the first two to actually uh, have a, a degree out of our entire family. I never thought my younger brother would make it this far. It's one of the biggest accomplishments of my life to graduate from school. Everything that he uh, put himself to do, he achieves it. After I saw that he was uh, doing great in his job, uh, making good money. Uh, I saw the need that he needed in education. I was going to some tough uh, 
times. Yeah, I saw the type of work he was doing. He wasn't happy. I moved him in to my house, and uh, within a few weeks, he was already started in, in his path uh, to his new career. He started with nothing, and now he has everything. I'm proud of you. You know, we'll both take care of my dad. Thank you. You're welcome. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052. He had a gift for numbers. Genius. But his life changed when he learned to count. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think I got something over here. He's crushing your table. Think you can beat the system? Right on to, to the 21 on DVD and Blu-ray High Def, July 22nd. I first saw this one when I was traveling through Prague. Geico probably thinks this is easy too. Dancing is good exercise. It works my glutes. Okay, America, I'll show you easy. This is you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so is this. Why do energy drinks make you crash? One minute you're wired up, the next you feel worse than before. The answer is large amounts of sugar and caffeine. That's why you should try a new liquid energy shot called 5-Hour Energy. With 5-Hour Energy, you can leave grogginess behind and sail through your day without feeling jittery, tense, or, you know. That's because 5-Hour Energy contains a powerful blend of B vitamins for energy and amino acids for focus, alertness, and better mood. There's zero sugar, about as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, and only 4 calories. The 2-ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes you're feeling bright, awake, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. New Mentos Gum, irresistibly fresh. Not doing what you want to do in life? There's a better way. Do what you love to do for a living. At the Golf Academy Schools, we're dedicated to preparing you for a successful career in the golfing industry. SDGA is an accredited golf career school that shares your love for golf. Call 1-866-588-SDGA now to get started on your path to a career in golf at one of our desirable campus locations. So quit just thinking about it and get out there. It's exploitative. Yeah. It's sensational. It appeals to your basest instincts, and you're going to watch every minute of it. <laughs> Introducing Pearl, a bold new take on reality TV. You're going to love it, even if you pretend you don't. Pearl starts tonight at 9, only on G4. Now, so far, E3 is shaping up to be ridiculously good, if, if what we've seen so far is any indication. I think it's an indication. Now, this is only just a taste of what's coming over the next three days. Once E3 08 is in full swing, we'll be there covering it all for you, playing the games and hoarding all the free stuff we can get our hands on. And then putting it on Craigslist. <laughs> That's because we are G4 and we are here for you. And of course, we're here for ourselves. Coming up this hour, the man behind some of your favorite games, Silicon Knights, Dennis Dyack, is here with the inside scoop on Two Human. Plus, Vin Diesel is coming back to video games with fast cars and over-the-top chases. It's the Wheel Man. Yes, and Bethesda's Todd Howard takes us into the post-apocalyptic world of his newest game, Fallout 3. But right now, let's go over to Olivia, who's got something for all of you dreamers. Thanks, guys. Now, you can't walk around E3 without bumping into someone who has a job creating the games that you love. To work in this industry, it takes plenty of hard work, 
lots of technical know-how and a metric ton of Red Bull. And if your guys are coming up short on all fronts, there is another field you should consider entering. Peter, I think, is one of the least known icons in the industry. Not only did he contribute to the motion in the game, but he also contributed to the storyline, and so few people know about him. The first time I saw his work, it just made me weep, you know. This guy could capture motion in a way to where all you had to see was of his data points, and you understood the pathos of humanity. Without me, it would just be motion. Motion less, minus the capturing. Just motion. And nobody wants that. Four. He's actually a pretty exciting guy to watch because when he tries to get into character ahead of time, he really immerses himself in that character for not just hours, not just days, but sometimes weeks at a time. I've played robots, I've played, you know, super fans, Gollum in the uh, Lord of the Rings video games. Yes, my precious. It's really sad to see now a character as as just so creative with such creative potential has just been, you know, abused by our industry. It's just it's just heartbreaking. There's nothing wrong with doing a hot coffee mod. We ready to go? All right, let's do this. <sighs> oh, girl, you should be getting paid for this. I actually played both characters. I was, I was the guy and the girl. I, I myself. Was that good? You guys want another take on that one? He's redefined what motion capture means in America and really all over the world. It's a struggle. But if you believe in what you're doing, it'll pay off. Because there's one motion they can't capture. That's emotion. Oh, and hands. Hands are really hard. but it's hope. Right now, let's go back over to Kevin and Morgan for a look at that other big convention coming up very, very soon. Yes, thank you, Olivia. E3 is sorely lacking in cosplay as of late, but don't worry, that's no problem because G4's Day Out of the Sun Summer continues with another huge event, Comic-Con 08 Live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're taking you inside San Diego's pop culture phenomenon with an unprecedented six hours of colossal live coverage. That's right. No one else has G4's access to the events, the comics, the movies, and, of course, the stars. Yes. The fanboys are back, and this time it's serious, so do not miss Comic-Con 08 Live. That's July 24th and 25th. You guys can check out g4tv.com slash Comic-Con if you want more info. It's convenient like that. Yeah. Well, after the break, Dennis Dyack will be here to talk about his latest project, Two Humans. I know. Later on, we're going to lock ourselves up for a couple hundred years or so with Todd Howard and Fallout 3. So get ready for our exclusive world premiere demo. Now get up to the second E3 08 hands, exclusive video, screenshot, photos, and more at g4tv.com slash E3, and we will be right back. E308 Live is brought to you by Comic-Con 08 Live. Comics, movies, and stars, July 24th and 25th, only on G4. In nine days, Carl Conrad, the coolest geek in the world, will be watching Comic-Con 08 Live on G4 with exclusive coverage of Wolverine, Watchmen, Star Trek, Terminator Salvation, and Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Comic-Con 08 Live starts July 24th, only on G4. It may have been a messy divorce that suddenly cut your income in half, but not your bills. It might have been an injury, an illness, or your boss just cutting back your hours. It doesn't really matter how you got in over your head. It only matters that you are and that we're here to help. If you've got over $10,000 in credit card debt and you can't ever see breaking free, then call J. Warren Financial and do it now. Being in over your head is a vicious cycle. One day late, they charge you a late fee. Miss a payment, they double your rate. You just don't think it's fair, and neither do we. This is not bankruptcy or just a simple rate reduction plan. We fight for you using our proven experience and the insider programs the credit card companies try to hide. If you owe at least $10,000 to credit card companies, you owe it to yourself to call J. Warren Financial at 800-768-6603. 
Just because you got in over your head doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. Call 800-768-6603 today, and we could be on your side tomorrow. I have a structured settlement, and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. They help thousands, they'll help you too. One lump sum of cash they will pay to you. If you get long term payments but you need cash now, call JG Wentworth, 877 Cash Now. 877 Cash Now. 877 Cash Now. 877 Cash Now. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 Cash Now. We really balance each other well. Yes, the balance <laughs> is ridiculous. Yeah, because like great. he motivates me to get going, do things. When he, you know, starts to get a little type A, <laughs> I'll bring him down a little bit. Lee has a powerful drive within him. I'm an intense guy. I always have a full plate. She'll tell me, Lee, relax, you can't control this. I think that that difference between us is what makes us so great together. See how it feels to be matched based on compatibility. Log on and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com Unleash your inner rock star. The Aerosmith way. Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Rated T. Hi, honey. New BK Fresh Apple Fries. It's what the king would feed his kids, if he had them. Aren't you going to say hello to your father? Fresh apples shaped like fries and Kraft macaroni and cheese, kid meal friendly. All I knew was I wanted to work on electronics, obviously. I wanted to have a really successful career at it. My name is Nathaniel Carpenter. I am a information systems analyst. Well, I got my education from ITT Technical Institute. My wife thinks that my choice to go to ITT Tech has definitely helped me to reach the goals that I have for myself, my wife, and our life together. To be able to pick and choose where we want to go and also the lifestyle that we want to live. What I liked about ITT Tech was the fact that um, I liked everything about ITT Tech. <laughs> We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. Get an education that can help you reach your goals. ITT Tech has information on financial aid for those who qualify. Call 1-800-372-4052. open early and picking all the tender tidbits inside. Ah, the ones that everybody loves. And you guys, we are feeding those tidbits to you like a like a mama just bird just feeding her little chicks. You know, if Kevin was here, he would do this. But that's gross. But also informative if you think about it. And I Yeah, knowledge is power. My power is I know you're not used to me and I'm sorry, Adam. Coming up, we'll talk with the fences Todd Howard about Fallout 3 and then bring you the exclusive world premiere demo of this open world end of times epic. But first, it's time to find out what you guys think of this year's E3 show with our next X poll question. 2008 will be the year of what? Will it be A, fighter, B, RPG, or C, shooter? Tell us what you guys think at g4tv.com slash E3 or text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, on your mobile phone to vote. You guys, we will be back later with the results uh, in this show. But right now, we want to go over to Kevin and Morgan, who are feeling very social. And Kevin knows what I'm talking about, right? Kev? No? Huh? Yeah, yeah E3! Yeah. Cheering. Oh, oh, it's just okay, so good it. cheering. Oh, oh, it's kind of like three. the jazz oh, hands of cheering. Oh. All right, I, I got gotcha. you. All right, now we have covered a lot so far today, and we want to hear your take on the latest news and everything else coming up at E3. All right, for that, we're joined, of course, by the virtual audience powered by Stick Cam. All right, joining us right now in the virtual audience is Chris, all the way from California. Very What's your fun. question, Chris? 
Hi, uh, now that the Microsoft press conference is over, what do you think uh, Sony and Nintendo have to bring to the party to match or even beat Microsoft this year? This year? You know, I, I don't question. think Microsoft brought anything that massive that we hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. I know there's fanboys saying Final Fantasy 13. Yeah. And I'm saying, but it was, okay. a, it was a well rounded press conference. They brought a, a well, little something for everybody. It was well rounded, it was well thought out. They put a lot mm -hmm. of planning into it. They basically said that they're the juggernaut, they have every game, they have everything you want to play. If you're looking for a console, yeah. you need to buy an Xbox 360. And I think Sony, of course, needs to bring the games. Yeah, Sony's got to bring some exclusives. They have yeah. to answer back. Microsoft said, hey, look, we are going to beat Sony in units sold this generation or this year. So, yeah. so Sony has to answer back with something. And I think uh, Nintendo has to prove that third party uh, uh, developers and publishers are uh, that the Wii is a viable platform for right. them. Because Microsoft came out and said, look at all the money that third party developers are making. And so far, I hear that, you know, third party developers on the Wii, they're still struggling a bit. Well, I mean, Sony does love statistics and they've always loved their statistics. Right. They love their PowerPoint. Microsoft didn't have any of that stuff. They had like one one slide with a right. couple numbers on it. So we're going to see how Sony really responds to that, if they bring the numbers or if they bring something that's more accessible. But next, let's hear from Anthony in New York. What's your question, Anthony? Hey, I was wondering, does it kind of seem like Microsoft is copying the best stuff from Nintendo and Sony with their fall updates? I'm going to counter with uh, copying the worst stuff. You really hate these avatars, I don't you? I hate them. What if when you're playing so Gears of War, though, you beat it on the ridiculously insane difficulty and you get a sweet horde or, you know, locust t shirt for your avatar? Okay. I guess not. I guess not. No, look, did, did, did Microsoft perhaps copy the Miis and, and the, the home avatars for them? Maybe they did. But you know what? Microsoft always innovated first on the online space. Everybody else has copied them. And, and they're the first to really bring, like, the interactive game shows and to bring, like, a partnership with Netflix. So they're doing some really. Some really innovative stuff along with copying your favorite parts. Well, it's not it's not like Nintendo invented the avatar. Right. So we shouldn't really give them too much credit for that. But they made it cute and customizable oh. like the No, okay. All right. You really hate those avatars. Finally, we have <laughs> Joey from Oregon. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, um what game from the 4 v 3 are you guys looking to get your hands on? You know, we're getting our hands on a lot of games right here on our very own floor. Yeah, I was excited to to, to interview uh, the Halo Wars guys. I yeah. want to play it because yeah. it, it looks like it's easy to control uh, with an actual Xbox controller, which is still is still confusing to me as a PC gamer <laughs> to know that you could play an RTS on the console. But right. I'm excited. I, I, I want to embarrass myself at the Lips booth. I'm shaking that motion-sensitive controller, and I'm taking... You are not. What was that girl's you name? Duffy? Not. Hillary Duffy? Huffy? What was her name? Just just Duffy. Duffy. Well, just Duffy is going down when I get my hands on you're that gonna controller. You're going to plug your Zune into your Xbox, <laughs> and then you're just going to rock out. That is it. All right. Virtual audience, thank you so much for coming by. Now let's go over to Adam, who's with one of gaming's biggest names. Now, Two Human has been in development for around 10 years. It was once a PS1 title, then a GameCube title, but now it's finally on its way as an Xbox 360 exclusive. And here with the latest on the game is Dennis Dyack, the man behind the cyberpunk Morse Code. Silicon Knights, developers of Legacy of Cain and Eternal Darkness, are set to release their highly anticipated RPG action title, Two Human. The game features two-player co-op, online multiplayer, and enough loot to keep you happy for days. With Two Humans set to debut this August, who better to talk about it than the man in charge, president and founder of Silicon Knights, Dennis Dyack. Pleasure. Glad to be here. So, the, the moment is almost upon us. It is. It I is. mean, you, you've, you've really been at this a long time. I, I think the first thing is, a lot of people say 10 years in the making, 10 years in the making. Mm. Um, what was that game, like its original inception back when it could have been on the PlayStation 1? Uh, to it's totally different. And I think, um, you know, we went through some development on the PS1, but when we became a second party of Nintendo and we worked with them, uh, we really didn't do a lot of development on it. And then when we moved away from Nintendo and started working with Microsoft, that's really where the gestation started. And we really started working towards the, in the incarnation that Two Human is now with the hunting and gathering, the live play, and it's... It's really been a regular development cycle. Now, was when did Two Human really become like that? That was, that was the primary thing that you were working on. Was it always in the background yep. while you were working on games like Eternal Darkness or working on the Metal Gear Solid game? Yeah, Silicon Knights always has a lot of ideas in the back burner, and if it's a good idea, it just survives. So we've really uh, we've always loved Two Human, and we've always wanted to get to it. And uh, so after after we finished, you know, Eternal Darkness and moved on to Metal Gear, we had our sights set on on Two Human and. We just went for it after after we finished. So. Now, obviously, even from that point, 
it, it has been a fairly long de development cycle for yes. you. Um, what is that like? I mean, obviously, it's tough even to try to do a game in two years, so much less, you know, three or even more than that. How do you stay with it and stay focused? Uh, it's just the love for the game. And, uh, you know, we really do uh, have a lot of passion for the things that we create. And I think everyone at Silicon Knights wants to make the best possible experience that we can with every game and you know each time there's something different with it and I think Two Human really stands out on its own from the previous games that we've made um, and, and really sort of takes Silicon Knights in a new direction from our previous ones so we're pretty happy with it. Yes it definitely is. Now was, was it always going to be the cyberpunk telling of Norse mythology or were, were there other iterations of how you're going to try to tell the story in your mind? Well that's pretty, a pretty funny event occurred. Uh, Ken McCulloch and myself uh, we've been working together for about 16 years and when we're thinking about you know after we finished Metal Gear or maybe just near the end of Metal Gear, we we're talking about what we wanted to do with Two Human, and we, we always had Norse mythology in there. We always sort of cater a lot of research into what we do with all of our games. But then we were kicking back and forth what we could do to make it really stand out and be different. And he said jokingly one day, he goes, why don't we just retell Norse mythology? Because uh, he was frustrated because we we're trying to work with ideas. And I looked at him and he just went, no, no. And I go, yes, yes. And then we started working towards it, and that's how it came to be. So be careful what you say at work, because it'll turn out to be a reality or a virtual reality or, or, or something like that. Exactly. Um, now, now the game, you yourself have described it that it has similarities to Diablo. I have to yeah. say, after playing it, I find it a little bit more complex like that. What yeah. do you think is the best way to describe how you play the game in terms of its combat? It's, it's, really, it's really deceptive by watching it until you play it yourself. So it's got the hunting and gathering and all the you know upgrades that you can see and you can really change a character, but uh, games, let's say, like Diablo World of Warcraft, you essentially attack an enemy, wear it down, and then move on to the next one. There's some strategy, but in Two Human, it's very strategic. You almost have to assess the battlefield and say, okay, I've got a missile guy over here, I've got a troll over here, I've got a leader over here, and you've got to pick and choose how you're going to beat them. You, if you see a guy with a shield, you have to do juggle him in the air and, and do a fierce, and if you don't do that, you're going to die a lot. Yes, and I gotta say, I've been having so much fun playing this early build of the game. I just wanted to you know, just let oh, you know thanks. that yourself. And once again, for our viewers, when will the game be coming out? August 19th. We uh, just released a demo today. That's right, that's right. So you can play the demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Demo! We, got, we have a new website up, and uh, we just re released a trailer exclusively to you guys, and it aired a few days ago, so we're excited. I hope everyone likes what they see. Yes, I do already. I think a lot of people out there will. Dennis, so good Adam, to see you. you. Congratulations on finally getting to oh, you and Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, let's send things back over to Morgan and Kevin. It is so great to have you on set. Thank you so much. Yes. Now, all, I know. All of this E3 excitement might be a bit overwhelming, maybe even making you a little queasy. Mm. Mm, but if that's mm. the case, watch out for Hero G4's new original series. Yes, inspired by the outrageous, uh, outrageous, outrageousness <laughs> Outrageous. found on the viral web. Yes, the viral web, not the regular web. <laughs> Hero combines competitive speed eating and intense physical challenges, all designed to shake up the competitors. Mm. So just relax, let go, and hurl. It all starts tomorrow night at 9, right after E308 Live, only on G4. For details and to play the Hurl game, log on to g4tv.com slash Hurl. All right, we've got to take a very quick break. Coming up, we will run down everything that was just announced at the Electronic Arts Media Briefing. Plus, Vin Diesel is back in a brand new game, and this one is set in a world I know he's very familiar with. We'll go hands-on with the wheel man. Stay with us. 308 Live is brought to you by Hurl. Just relax, let go, and Hurl starts tomorrow night at 9, only on G4. It's exploitative. Yeah. It's sensational. It appeals to your basest instincts, and you're gonna watch every minute of it. <laughs> Introducing Hurl, a bold new take on reality TV. You're gonna love it, even if you pretend you don't. Hurl starts tonight at 9, only on G4. Your teeth are a living part of your body. And over time, the enamel begins to weaken from the inside. But now you can help rebuild your teeth. New Trident Extra Care, the only gum with Recaldin, 
a unique form of calcium that penetrates into and strengthens tooth enamel. Trident Extra Care. Chew strong. Loaded steakhouse from Burger King. How'd you earn a burger with baked potato topping? Just saved that stranded hiker. Carried him 25 clicks on my back. What about you? I've been lost for two weeks. I'm so hungry. Are you kidding me? That's it? You arrogant, undeserving sack! The new Loaded Steakhouse with premium Angus beef. So special, people may think you think you're special. There's one. There's another one. And another one. Get more than you ever imagined when you trade your games for something new at GameStop, where 150 titles are worth $15 or more. Power to the players. Crimes are an unfortunate part of our society. The field of criminal justice is full of men and women, both in the public eye and behind the scenes, working to secure our future. The ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice teaches the fundamentals of the criminal justice system and criminal justice skills. Graduates may be ready to pursue a broad spectrum of careers in the private sector, as well as entry-level positions involving criminal justice, including parole and probation, community corrections and court systems. Be one of the many dedicated Americans who participate in making our nation a better and safer place for us all. ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. The premium Dell XPS M1530 with Windows Live Photo Gallery. Load, edit, and share your photos. And for a limited time, get a flip video camcorder, all for just $9.99 or finance for less than $2 a day. Go to Dell.com or call now. Dell, yours is here. Just the games. Today's show was full of exclusive live hands-on demos, and it's only the beginning. Just multiply everything you see today by, I don't know, a gabillion, yeah. which is a lot. Yeah, that's just a so lot. You know. And then you'll have some idea of what's coming in the days ahead. Now, Microsoft wasn't the only company to have a big press event today. Electronic Arts wrapped up theirs earlier in the evening. Yes, that's right, Olivia. They don't have a new console to show, but plenty, plenty of software for the year ahead. First up was a demo of the first-person shooter. Really, it's a third-person shooter, Dead Space. In the new demo, the player, the player battles a polymorphic species named the Necromorphs. This clever enemy adapts with new stances, different tactics, and even sprouts new limbs based on where it was wounded. The player must find its weak points if they want to survive. Now, Dead Space is available on October 21st on the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the PC. Next up was another first-person shooter called Mirror's Edge. This game was first announced by EA last summer, if you guys remember. Now, Mirror's Edge has a realistic, brightly colored style set in a dystopia world that is heavily monitored by a totalitarian government. A network of runners, including the main character, Faith, are used to transmit messages while evading capture. In-game, certain items turn to red to help players find the right path for their character to take. EA calls it Runner's Vision. Mirror's Edge will be released simultaneously on Xbox, PS3, and the PC by the end of this year. And if you're curious, that game does not make you puke. Finally, the crowd was treated to Spore and Creator Finally, Will Wright. Yes. He was back to show it off. This time, he focused 
focus on the creature creator and cite some impressive statistics. Since the creator was released, it took users 24 hours to create, get this, 100,000 wow. creatures. That's in 24 hours. Amazing. And the total has now grown to about 2 million creatures. Since Spore will finally be available for the Mac and Windows on September 7th. And we're going to have more on Spore later in the week. Now, don't forget, you can watch the EA press conference in its entirety on our website. Go to g4tv.com. Actually, just go to g4tv.com for details. There's no <laughs> slash or anything. I would say Just excellent. leave it blank. Hey, right, guys, stick around because later in the week, we'll have demos of Dead Space, Mirror's Edge, and many others. But right now, let's send it back over to Kevin. What's after the slash? There's got to be something. Adam uh, just because Vin Diesel is a movie star, that doesn't mean that he can't be a nerd, right? I mean, besides being a D&D &D fanatic, he's also a huge gamer and was actively involved in the Chronicles of Riddick video game. Well, Vin has a new game on the way, and it's called The Wheel Man. And as you can guess, this one involves a lot of cars and probably a whole lot of explosions. Here's Will Man's executive producer, Sean Hemerick. Yeah. Gonna punch the pedal for us. Sean, thanks for stopping by. You're, the girls are waiting outside with posters. They're huge fans. When you got out of the limo, they were just chanting the name. And yeah, it's weird. Just hanging out with Vin gives you that kind of notoriety. Yeah, I bet yeah. it does. Your MySpace is blown up, right? Yeah, I, even... I need to learn how to do D&D &D now. But... <laughs> you do. Just, just roll, say Magic Missile a lot, and really enjoy Mountain Dew. Awesome. There's, nothing, there's nothing to it. Um, let's, let's talk about the wheel man here, because uh, this property, I mean, first of all, what, what are we driving? Why are we driving so fast? Can't we just obey the speed limits, click it or ticket kind of stuff? Yeah, the whole thing is we really want to give that like Hollywood feel to it so you know all the driving games have the over-the-top speed but we put a lot of like cinematic aspects to everything so as you're watching the game you can see like well different camera angles a lot of different cutaways but things that the players in control of right um want to give them the chance to have those moves. So when you pull off like a move like the Cyclone of Vehicle Melee, it's the player doing that move. They're the one pulling it off, and causing wanna, that to happen. I want to get to those those moves in a second, but first I want to talk about the inspiration for this game, because you said you wanted that Hollywood feel. So you, you watching Ronin. Yeah, all uh, the Ronin, all the Born Identity. Transporter, identities. Born Identity. Uh, yeah, you know, see him flying around the world in like a taxi cab and mini cars. You know, we totally have that. You know, it's more about you having the driving skill, mm -hmm. not having that like, well, if I don't get the Ferrari, I can't possibly beat this game. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, and how does the plot of the game relate to the movie that's coming out? Well, uh, all I know at this point, because we're so heads down in the game, is right. they're not copies. Mm -hmm. They're sequential. Uh, the one thing where the game tells one part of the story and the movie tells another part of it. Um, you have to talk to the Tygon guys and uh, some of the movie people. Sure. I know they're in the script. But it's nice and they, that you're not beholden to something else that's going on. You don't have to try to mirror another property. You guys can focus totally. on making the game as fun as you want. Yeah, with the game's scoring and script and stuff, we spent about three months with Vin's guy. It's actually a little more like probably six once we got down to it, uh, getting them together, linked mm -hmm. up and synced, and like, okay, this is going to be the canon for the game. And this is how we're going to get it to go forward. And how is it working with Vin exactly? Because I hear like the guy is the real deal. He's super into the games. He cares about the properties, and, and he can have discussions on a creative level as well as on a player level. You can. The kind of two things we've had with Vin is one, he, he is a gamer, so he knows what he's doing. Like one of the first times our creative director met with him, they sat and played uh, some fighting games for like a couple hours, right. talking about different things. And that actually gave us a lot of ideas on how to get back into the game and things we wanted to carry into the game. He's like, you know, it'd be really cool if we could have this be a more attack oriented, more like a punch, right. things like and that. His traps are so huge that no one can say no to him. So he ultimately, <laughs> no one ever going to bother. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> um, well, let's, the, when it comes to the driving experience of this game, you mentioned moves, which I think is interesting because mm -hmm. most people say, okay, I go fast, the game looks pretty, maybe there's some sparks and that's it, but you actually have a set of tools that you can use to dispatch other cars. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, we have all those things you'd expect from a high-speed driving game. Like, this is the uh, Cyclone right here, right? Exactly. What so what JJ's point? playing off right now is a Cyclone move. Basically, just like you saw in, like, Dart with a Vengeance, pull the handbrake, spin around, you have a few seconds, like, in a first-person shooter. Oh, if you hit the engine, uh, either the engine or you can take out the driver specifically, or if it's a car you can't kill, like a boss car, you just need to slow him down. You can shoot out the tires, a gas tank from behind. That is awesome. That is awesome. Hard to pull off in the Prius, too. I try. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Uh, and and there's also sort of like a, a muscle maneuver where you shift your, your weight and kind of... Yeah, totally. It's, well, JJ will probably do it here, but you can just, as anyone who gets near you, you can kind of just battle them and just slam them side to side, just flicking the right stick uh, side to side. Oh! So they send them that flying. That looks violent. And a pedestrian who was just waiting for the bus. Yeah, the guy was just standing. That there. happens, that happens. Well, tell me about the city, because obviously it's alive. There's things going on in there. Totally. It's a recreated Barcelona. We uh, took everything you wanted from having a Spanish city, throwing it around. Uh, and then we, of course, uh, took some artistic liberties, the fact that it's a video game. Right. Uh, but, like, here is, oh, and there, of course, roadblocks. So the players got control of this the whole time. Right. That isn't a scripted moment, other than the fact that it happens, but wherever the player's at, 
and they can take the route anywhere they want. It's open world. It happens different each time. Oh, that's incredible. And, and there's also, I mean, there's there's on foot aspects. There's a mm -hmm. huge shooting element. Uh, I, I want to touch on that, but we're running out of time. I, I have to ask, what about the online? Any multiplayer aspects? Uh, there's the online. We've been focusing a lot on the single player, and some of the moves we have just weren't going to be able to work well online. Right. So we didn't want to force them in online, and also we didn't want to limit the first person aspect, like just the combos of being able to sure. melee. Well, then, then let's then let's talk about that on foot experience. I mean, what kind of weapons do we have? Yeah, you get all the weapons you totally expect. Everything from the pistol, heavy machine guns, to the another you know, grenade launcher. Right. Uh, it was just a blast. You know, we have semis in the game, and you'll be driving a semi, and somebody shooting grenades at you, and just dodging those like gauntlet type things. Have you ever had moments where you, where you sit back and go, "Okay, wow, that just looked awesome. I can't believe oh, yeah. that." Just look at that. Yeah, we actually re we actually retuned some of the missions based on things people were just doing in the open world, like driving the semis around, and guys were just finding out somebody to slam. It's like, okay, we're gonna build a mission. One of the bosses is in a semi, right? And you gotta knock the tank off the back, and the trailer flying behind you. I love it. You got you know one of those. I don't know if this is a horrible reference, but like the old Knight Rider. Remember there was Good and Bad Knight Rider? Yeah. And he had to shoot out the weak point in the semi. Does it we blink totally red? Have that. Does it yeah. blink or does it? Okay. We totally okay. have that. You're driving the car and you got to shoot out the car and shoot out that dead point to throw the trailer well, Sean, flying. It, it looks incredible. It looks like you've done some really unique and interesting things too, vehicular based, you know, racing and combat, and I, I just can't wait to play it. So cool. thanks for coming on and showing it off thanks, to our sir. audience. It looks really good. Guys, that's the real man right now. We're going back to Adam and Morgan. Coming up, we'll get some FaceTime with Bethesda's Todd Howard and bring you the exclusive Woo! I know. Yeah. demo of Fallout 3. He's dancing again. And we'll have more new demos, the latest news, and the results of our latest poll as GeForce E308 preview show continues. Watch the best of our E308 coverage whenever you want, starting this Thursday, July 17th. Look for G4 on demand on your channel lineup. Check out G4TV.com slash video for more info. This August, X-Play's Got Game as Adam and Morgan travel the globe bringing you the biggest gaming conventions in the world. You want to see them and we've got them. Starting with G4's fan favorite award show, G4ia. Then on to Germany's Leipzig, Europe's battleground for console domination. And PAX, Washington's huge indie gamer culture party. So you just got done playing Metal Gear Solid 4. I gotta say, this is now one of the must-have games. This August, X-Play's Got Game, all month long starting August 7th. Part of G4, stay out of the sun summer. Uh, why are you guys drinking Coke Zero? We're not. We're drinking Coke, buddy. But it says Coke Zero on the bottle. Well, they must have messed up then and put Coke in the wrong bottle. I don't see what you... Okay, eyeball. Why don't you try it for us? Oh, I forgot you can't. You don't have a mouth. No mouth. Well, while we're busy drinking Coke, why don't you go stand in front of a hairdryer or something? Yeah, a hairdryer. What? Real Coke taste. Zero calories. A J.G. Wentworth success story, Felicia and the Annuity. A few years ago, I inherited an annuity from my grandfather. I started receiving monthly payments from his insurance company. Then everything seemed to happen at once. Felicia's employer moved to another state, and she was left unemployed. Your money starts to go pretty fast when there's no cash coming in. J.G. Wentworth knows that a big change in life circumstances can change how you look at your annuity. I heard about J.G. Wentworth through TV ads. If you have an annuity that is no longer serving your needs and you need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth. You'll get a free appraisal and have all your questions answered. Don't wait. The sooner you call, the faster you'll have your money. Call now. J.G. Wentworth helped me and they made it really easy. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call 866-433-9717. 866-433-9717. Here, at this modern-day watering hole, this urban Serengeti, it's man meets reptile. So, Lucy, what are you doing? Just a little online shopping. You should check out geico.com, get a free rate quote. If you like what you see, you can buy it online, over the phone, or at your local geico office. Cool. Remarkable. Oh, no. no. Did you hear something? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, it's ja unglaublich, dass die gibt. Ewig kenne ich ja. Aber gut schaust du aus. Deck los. Was mit dir, Mann? Komm her. Spit out your dry gum and chew another piece already, or we'll find you. Get his gum. Got it. Let's get out of here.
the ridiculously long-lasting gum. New Stride Sweet Cinnamon. In this home, a family grows. Children learn and play. Bonds are built. But before it was a house, it was a detailed drawing on a plan. The bachelor degree program in construction management in the School of Drafting and Design at ITT Technical Institute offers educational opportunities that can help students prepare for challenging and rewarding careers in the construction industry. There's a demand for individuals with knowledge and skills to manage construction projects. The construction industry needs professionals who can oversee construction projects in accordance with the plans and specifications. Thanks to the hard work and dedication of many, this dream became a home. There are still many more to be built. ITT Technical Institute School of Drafting and Design. Education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. Next, glimpse the future with live and commercial-free coverage of the Sony press conference. All part of G4's week-long E308 live coverage. by Wendy's. Now, screw the trailers. Forget them. We've got the games we and we're playing them live. Now, still to come, we go hands-on with Bethesda's follow-up to Oblivion. He's the super violent, ultra-tense Fallout 3. You guys don't want to miss our exclusive world premiere demo. Then, we'll tell you what you can expect to see tomorrow on day one of E308 Live. But first, it looks like the results of our latest X poll are in. Let's find out how the people voted. Okay, earlier in the show, we asked you guys what game genre will reign supreme in 2008. The results are in, and you said 2008 will be the year of the shooter. Wow. We'll be getting 65% of the vote. Does that surprise you? They seem a little serious about that. Yeah, 65. People love shooters. All right, now let's go over to Adam and Kevin, who have the man behind one of the year's most talked about games. If you're a fan of retro future post-apocalyptic RPGs, then Fallout 3 is just the game for you. Yes, but even if you, you, you're not, and you probably are, but even if you're not, you need to see this game because our next guest can fill us in on all the gruesome, amazing details. Bethesda Softworks executive producer Todd Howard is known for creating expansive and detailed fantasy worlds. After major success with the Elder Scrolls series, Howard and his team are headed to the apocalypse for their next adventure. Fallout 3 continues the tradition of open world gameplay, player freedom, and the feeling of being immersed in a completely new world. But it's not pretty, and you'll need to be smart and ruthless to survive. All right, Todd, it's so good to have you. And We're going to get to the game in, in, in one second. I'm just curious. Uh, I'm going was, down in flames. It's gonna flames? Be, it's going to be bad. Okay, good. I, I, I love bad. Um, obviously, your game is super awesome. Is there any other game that's at E3 that's kind of uh, caught your eye? I uh, had some time at the Microsoft briefing to play with Resident Evil 5 and the Capcom guys, and that game is off the hook. Yeah. And that is really yeah. good stuff. It, it, it's yeah. so gorgeous. Yeah, it's just going to come up now. It's going to be going to be amazing. But uh, I want to ask you about the, the PC industry in general. I'm wondering, uh, it, have you had that moment of silence for the fact that it's sadly a platform that's dead, apparently? I mean, everybody for the We're last... We're going to fall out in the PC. I know. Every, like... every year people say the PC's dying. I mean... It, Why it, do they have to, if it's dead, they wouldn't have to keep saying that. So obviously it's right. not dead. Exactly. It's like one of those creatures that won't die at the end of a horror movie. Okay, and with that, <laughs> let's go look at some of this wonderful game that you brought with us. All right, so here's uh, Fallout 3. I'm going to I'm going to play and talk see what we can do. So here I am out in the wasteland. The ga the game does take place in post-apocalyptic Washington DC in the year 2277. So, it's a big open world. I'm kind of on the outskirts of the wasteland right here. And, you know, we're really pushing the hardware in the 360 here. Yeah. You can play in third person if you want or first person. Now, are, are, are we looking at tech that's functionally what we saw in Oblivion, or is it completely new? We started with the Oblivion stuff, but you know, you learn a lot making such a big game in the platform, and we're really, really pushing the hardware. We're drawing easily twice as many objects. You know, the 360 just chews through doing all these level of destruction. We've rewritten all of the pixel shaders over again. There goes our iBot with the voice of Malcolm McDowell. He's the uh, president, John Henry Eden. Now, now the president and, and this whole group of the sense that there is somehow a government that but no one can see it. What, how, how does that work in the game? Well, it's kind of supposed to be mysterious, you know, so you, you'll find out. You kind of see these iBots and they're broadcasting. Um, and then as the story goes on, you, you find out more and more about what is the government doing and, and who is the government. 
here are my various uh, stats I have, charisma. And right you now we're, we're looking at all, all your stats on your wrists, easily accessible. Right, so it's cool, you know, we spent a lot of time, our joke was we ran out of places to put pixel shaders, so now I put them on the fonts. <laughs> right. You know, we spent forever <laughs> on like this retro 50s device. Um, we have lots of perks from the previous games, like Bloody Mess, which mm -hmm. Does that to people? Let's Actually, for, for some of our audience, blood sausage. Let's 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 get a sense. How do the perks work in the game? So when you level up, you get to pick a perk, mm -hmm. and then that's like a special ability that your player has. That's it's you know over the top in some ways. Different things you can do. Um, Bloody mess is one of the favorites. Bloody mess is one of the, one of the best icons I've seen in yeah. a long while. But it what are some of the other perks? Uh, my other favorite one is Mysterious Stranger, which is you pick it and then. Once in a while, a guy will just appear and help you out. So the way we do is, once in a while in VATS, if you don't kill a guy, a mysterious stranger just pops up with his fedora, and bam, and just kills the guy for you. Oh, well, I, I need a mysterious stranger. Let's, let's jump back in the game here. <laughs> yeah, let's see the game here. Because, yeah, yeah. And, and you said VATS, and, and for those who, who didn't get a chance to see the press conference, for those who, who still haven't read up on the game, can you describe VATS and how the system works? Uh, VATS stands for the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System. So it allows you to pause time and queue up moves. I'll, I'll show some of it in a Yeah, break. yeah, let's go take I'm a look. And turn right? on the uh, radios that are broadcasting. I like my marching band music. There we go. Yeah, the moment Especially this demo play, came on the screen. It hold just... on, let me switch to the sniper rifle. Uh oh. So you can do this in real time. Um, oh, nice. Where's the other guy? Shoot me over. So this is VATS. If I press the right bumper, it's going to go into VATS, and then I can queue up individual body parts. And so I can say, okay, here's my percentage chance to hit, and then queue up these moves, and then. Oh, uh, then it pulls you out, you get the cinematic camera. Oh! Yeah! And that's all, that's all we have. Just guys, <laughs> yeah. guys blowing up everywhere. I could do that for 100 hours. Easily. Uh, and, 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 I and, have. And, and when you do that with the VAS, does it, it, it's, it's that quick. Go in, choose the body part, get yeah, out, you wanna, see Even the... though it's, it's tactical, you want to keep it quick. And it's, it's optional, so you can play it like a first-person shooter, or you can do that. This is one of these protection pods you can get in and uh, kind of avoid things. There are skill books you can find. Like it didn't this, work uh, for that guy, apparently. Chinese, uh, <laughs> this is a Chinese commando, so I'm finding stuff in there. And you can actually find magazines. So what I'm doing here is, that's under the aid category. We have various drugs and things like that, but the, the Chinese Army Spec Ops manual is like, you consume it like in the previous, you read it, now my sneak skill goes up. Right, right. But then nice. you also have various drugs you can take, um, which help you out. And then these are also addictive. So if you abuse the drugs, you can get addicted to them and then you have to stay on them or your stats are hurt. So a really nice balance with how all of that works life, as well. Life's just hard in the post-apocalypse. <laughs> Apparently. Now, I, I think we're going to stop down for a second and we're going to go to break and come back and see even awesome. more good stuff. And I believe you have a special surprise that I don't even know just, about. Just for you. It's just, just for, for me? You. Yes. All right, everybody, just stay right there. We'll be right back with more Final Three. A special surprise. You guys, you not want to miss the second half of a world premiere demo. There might be a mysterious stranger. You never know. Yeah. Stick around, everybody. Oh, actually, first, let's check in with the ladies here. They have a very, very important message. We do have a very important message. We would like to remind you you of gcycle.org, which is G4's partnership with Earth 911, aimed at reducing the impact of electronic waste on the environment. That's right, the environment is taking a beating these days. So when you're considering what to do with all those old consoles, computers, cell phones, please remember to gcycle yeah. all your tech. Visit gcycle.org to find local places to, di to ditch your old electronics and start gcycling. Also, another yeah. important message to Todd Howard, we like surprises too, <laughs> not just Adam. Hello, we're here. We're going to get some good surprises right after so. the break. Todd Howard will take us through more of Fallout 3. Yeah. I know, I know. E308 Live is brought to you by G-Cycle, G4's plan to reduce e-waste. Visit gcycle.org to find local places to ditch your old electronics. Next, glimpse the future with live and commercial-free coverage of the Sony press conference. All part of G4's week-long E308 Live coverage. At eHarmony, we match you with other singles based on compatibility. And the best part is, you can review your matches absolutely free. Aren't you curious to see who you'd be matched with? Log on and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com We are a very close family. Me and my mom are like best friends. I have a degree in computer drafting. When we went to ITT Tech and we saw the drafting program, I just thought this would be her place. And it was a great school because it was a lot of hands-on. Uh, my mom was the one that helped me decide to go to ITT Tech. One evening we were coming home, we happened to be driving by, and I just pulled in the parking lot and said, let's go see what they have to offer. And I started the next day. The teachers, they were very nice, very friendly. Like if you needed to stay for a while and needed help with your work, they'd help you. 
My passion is coaching girls ice hockey. That was another big thing. I had time to do things that I enjoyed while going to school. And then at graduation, they gave us a rose to give to the person that influenced you the most. So I gave it to my mom. Really, if it wasn't for her pushing me to go, I'd, <laughs> I probably would have still been at home. <laughs> I'm extremely proud of you. It's been a wonderful experience to watch you grow and become a real woman. <laughs> we are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052. With over a billion movies delivered so far, it's movie time. Netflix. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. I am an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. They help thousands, they'll help you too. One lump sum of cash they will pay to you. If you get long-term payments but you need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. The all-new season of Code Monkeys continues. Give me the best boob job 200 bucks can buy. Yeah. All-new episode Sunday night at 10, only on G4. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Tech savvy, the nerd, the nasty, hack three, hack G4, ride a chip two, man, this nerd core scoring free plays in the arcade and beyond. Plus, I got so many gadgets, I'm the nerdy James Bond. Thought about sharing on the telegarden renegade, sharing freaking text, baby, hacking from the game. Paid. Mess with me and feel the wrath of a non con We get that rule 34 on your mind So watch your girl, it's a nerd's world Welcome back to G4 G3 OS preview show presented by Wendy Now we have covered a lot today And it's only fitting we end with this the show with the, the end of the world itself. That's right. Yes. Now we just got a hint of what to expect in Fallout 3 with Todd Howard, but now Adam and Kevin are ready for so much more. Yes. Alright, we talked about it, looked at it, admired it, and we just got our first taste. That's right. Can we please play some more Fallout yeah. 3? Let's please talk it out. Yeah. Daddy like you. Yeah. I like you. So we're uh, coming up on a raider camp here. I already did the sniper rifle. Let's switch to the uh no, let's do grenades. Yeah, Good why not? Let's chuck yeah, a little grenades. grenade at him. Not gonna use bats or yet? Oh, there we go. Uh, no, in this. Let me see. Can I get some guys over here? Yeah, we'll do it to him. See what happens. Die. Oh! oh nice. Whoa! Oh. He's still going. Oh! You know, so there's that. Excellent, excellent weightless torso physics. <laughs> oh my God! So it is. Oh! So it is the player. You can play this as a shooter. You can, but then fast is a lot of fun because you can like, okay, combat shotgun head. the RoboCop camera angle there. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, dollar. Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> that this is guy incredible. always messes me up. Oh, my arm's been crippled. And a stint pack there. So you actually get damage to various body parts. It's yeah, not just, it's... hey, I'm losing health everywhere. Oh, where is this guy? 
Let me get my sniper rifle. I love that the patriotic radio station trudges on throughout all of this. We will this endure. Gets yeah. in trouble. There it is. Uh oh. He's gonna have to go out again. We'll do that to him. Redundant, but I want him dead. You know what, Todd? That's really not redundant. <laughs> yeah, that's the less awesome can be redundant. He, he exploded slightly different. <laughs> exactly, so, uh, that's true. A lot of stuff over here you gotta pick up to survive, so picking up trash is important. Um, but there are various skills in the game. So here's a container over here, and I can open this up and try some lock picking. Oh, There's nice. also a help system in the game you can use if you need it. Um, but the way this works is the left stick is moving this bobby pin, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to find the right angle for it, and then I can open up the container. And that's based on your, uh, your lock picking skill and sure. all of that. And then I can pick up these uh, these frag mines. Is there like a brute force type skill that you can get to just pound the box into the ground until it no, knocks that over? There, that there is really, you know, let's be stealthy and let's right. have this, uh, uh, you know, not just be a, a combat fest. You can also talk your way through various situations. Well, I, can't, I couldn't do it with this one, but, uh, you know, let All me right. uh, take out this turret with some There dash. we go. And we have laser weapons, so it's not just kind of like old, you know, old yeah. 1950s type right. of weaponry. Exactly. Um, and so what I'm going to do here, you had asked about this, Adam, last time I was on. Yes. And I was explaining some of the weapons you can make, mm -hmm. including uh, the rocket launcher. This is a weapon you can build. Um, so you build it out of a, you know, a wood chipper and a leaf blower. You're going to see the Mr. Chipper there. You can build it. your own weapons in you the game. Build, right. see, this is a weapon you can build, and then when you go to load it up, it, it goes in your inventory and finds all the crap you have, like this lunchbox and a all stuffed these stuffed animal. animals. <laughs> all right, and then you can use this, you know, and launch things at people and be like, okay, I'm going to, you know, give you the lunchbox, and then. Uh, <laughs> that has a uh, different meaning in my world. She's kind of cowering for me, even though I'm pelting with teddy bears. And you can do this in VATS, which just, you know, it gets a little ridiculous, but it's, let me target her head, come on. Uh, all right, we'll go for the chest. And then give her some teddy bears in VATS. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, oh! Her, oh my! Our teddy bear teddy bears. You know, so that was, that was for you. No, 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 <laughs> thank you, Todd. Now, I know that was special, but special usually means like, Oh, it has a bow around it. That? <laughs> you just shot teddy bears yeah. in an M-rated game. And then uh, you can walk all the way down to the city, ride the elevator to the top of the Washington Monument there. Wow. So it's a huge open game, just like our previous stuff. We so, can go anywhere and do what you want. And, and when you say you can go there, you're saying you can go there without much loading or with any loading you do, at all? In that case, because the city is, you have to go through the metro tunnels. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to go through a load, which is a level that you play through um, full of ghouls and scary things like that. Now, now uh, Todd, we got about three minutes left, so I'd love to see. Uh, okay, I, I mean, we, have, we have plenty of time here. So. Oh, goody. So this and this is a regular missile launcher that fires true weapons, and not yeah, not teddy bears, yeah. not bed. explosive teddy bears. Uh, <laughs> so these sentry bots, these are kind of these roving tanks that are out in the wasteland. These pre-war robots. I feel like we, we've touched on so much from yeah. from vats to, to enemies to, to approaches to things to making on weapons. But what about the, the moral decisions that you have to make throughout fall? Yeah, you know, you can be a good or bad person depending on who you side with or the things you do. You know, if you do quests and help people out versus shooting them in the head. With teddy bears. You'll be a good person or a bad person. And then maybe you'll become friends with the Brotherhood of Steel, who's made the Pentagon mm. down here. They're like their own personal fortress. Um, but now, you have to watch out for you know certain bad guys, like here come the Enclave. These okay. are one of the, you asked about that iBot. They're one of the ba main bad guys uh, in the game. And, and, and it's, uh, did it say that you discovered a new radio station or that you picked up a new I signal? I did. So those broad, you get a message when you pick up a new broadcast, and mm -hmm. then I can turn on my Pip Boy and listen to that. It's a good way to pick up quests, where they're, you know, we're going to oh. kind of lead you to a new quest. Oh, sure. Based on, um, you know, hearing somebody who needs some help. I think somebody, like to be honest, you're about to nuke this guy. Yeah, so I have my the fat man, my mini nuke launcher. Yeah, I have yeah. a mini nuke launcher. Yeah, you know that's that's fun for cleaning up in, in the hard battles like this one. So we'll uh, let him have it. Oh, nice. Let's see it. Come on. You can do some of this and just you know shoot a spray uh, up in the air. Oh, not gonna come straight down. Oh, no. Know, play the hibachi chef catch. And then there goes you. Sometimes my leg comes down on top of me. But, okay. <laughs> Thank that's, you. Uh, that's the game. That Thank is you so much for coming on. Awesome. That was, that, was, that was just, yeah, that was just, just, just staggering, staggering, staggering. Um, 
Thank you for showing us Fallout 3 and bringing me the best teddy bear death ever. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Our preview show is just about finished, but our coverage of E3 has really only yeah. just begun. Here's what's coming up later in the week. Attention gamers, we are just getting started. Over the next three days, we will check out over 40 exclusive games. We'll go hands-on with the new meaty multiplayer modes in Gears 2, the Prince of Persia reboot, co-op zombie fighting in Left 4 Dead, head-to-head -head brawling in Street Fighter 4, and the amazing-looking Resident Evil 5. We'll also test our powers in Star Wars The Force Unleashed, get our breath taken away by Dead Space, and fight off the invasion in the PS3 exclusive Kill Zone 2. If you have a game you want to see, we will have it for you. It's all live, it's E308, and it's only here on G4. Well, that's about it, everybody, for the preview show, but G4 fans, Sun Summer continues right now. Our extensive week-long E3 coverage has all of the latest gaming announcements. Up next, check out the unprecedented commercial-free spotlight on Nintendo, immediately followed by our spotlight uh, on Sony, which is at 2, and then at 6, we are live on the convention yeah, floor. We are. Yes, we are. That's tomorrow. And thanks again to Todd Howard for exclusively bringing us teddy bear laundry. Yes. It's a we yes. have so many demos. And that was all in the amazing yes. demo we got to fall out for you. Yeah. That was a treat. We have so many demos, but it's funny. Like, that got so much screaming. There's something here. about yeah. the blood and the guts and yeah. the gore and, and the teddy bear. And yeah. it off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the blood, man. the guts, know, and the gore. It. That's what it's you about. You can take a nuke with you. I know. Well, <laughs> That's my you future. All the E3 action all week long, up close and hands on. Visit g4tv.com slash E3 for additional exclusive E3 content. Thanks Good for night, watching. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. See you later.